Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Monday evening, June 19th. We're talking about Tropical Storm Brett, newly formed here in the Central Atlantic. We'll track west-northwestward, generally toward the Eastern Caribbean over the next few days, where the chances of at least some weather impacts to the island chain are increasing, and we'll talk about the forecast during this video. I'll give you a close-up view as the sun is setting over the system right now, and relative to yesterday, uh, we see some more rotation evident to the eye in visible satellite imagery. It's still difficult to see down at the surface level, but certainly mid-level rotation is there, and it has been enough to convince the forecasters at NHC that there is in fact a closed circulation somewhere under here, and so they have named it uh, Tropical Storm Brett as a result. We're not seeing very well organized banding as of yet, just a couple clumps of moderately deep thunderstorms near the center. If we had to guess on the location, it's probably somewhere on the northwestern edge of the convective mass at the end of the loop here. And we got a hint from a microwave pass earlier today from the AMSR-2 satellite, which showed that clump of convection and the low-level cloud lines in blue here suggested that the low-level center was somewhere in this area on the tip of that thunderstorm cluster there. So if we take a look at the loop again, one thing we'll notice is that if we assume that the low-level center is somewhere in here, the mid-level rotation is centered a little bit to the southeast, so there might be some vertical tilt to the vortex at this point in time. That would be a sign of disorganization, a sign that the system is not about to take off and intensify rapidly in the short term, but gradual organization is continuing, and this is something we talked about being expected yesterday, and we are seeing that process continuing today. You'll also notice on the, the big loop here that some clouds at the upper levels are now streaming out toward the south and southwest. Yesterday that wasn't happening and these clouds were moving toward the center. So we're seeing an improvement in upper level outflow or breathing of the storm, if you will, indicating that the upper level environment is a little more favorable today than it was 24 hours ago. Now looking at some of the model guidance here, this is where a lot of uncertainty has been waiting for Brett to form and exactly how strong it got over the ensuing days this week was going to determine how fast it moved westward toward the Caribbean and also how far north it moves. And that continues to be true today and we have seen some shifts in the model guidance. This is the GFS showing the mid-level moisture plot and the reason I show this one is because when you see the, the red L here right underneath of this deep green mass, that shows that it's embedded in the deep moisture pocket. There's not a lot of vertical shear to disrupt it and force in dry air. And that indicates a generally favorable setup for continuing strengthening. So we'll see on the model as we go forward that some intensification does happen. The pressure lowers, indicating intensification by Tuesday evening, Eastern time. But you'll notice something that the deep moisture pocket starts to become asymmetric and the storm is now centered on the western edge of the pocket. And this brings up a point that although vertical shear is much lower than we would typically expect for this time of year in this part of the basin for the month of June, it is still there in light to moderate form. So about 15, maybe 20 knots of vertical shear will exist during the next few days, uh, beginning about Tuesday and Wednesday onward as this approaches the Caribbean, and that will likely cause some limitations on how strong the storm can get. I'll show you the upper level flow here, and right now you can see the nice healthy upper level outflow coming out of the east and then turning toward the north. These upper level easterlies uh, mean that there is light shear because the low level flow is also out of the east, so they're out of the same direction and roughly the same speed, so pretty low vertical shear as of right now. Uh, but that is going to increase a little bit as the system moves westward. Uh, it'll be moving westward fairly quickly. It's actually moving at about 20 miles per hour toward the west right now, which means that the low level flow may at some point, if not already, be a little bit faster than the flow aloft. And we can see that if we look at the soundings on the GFS, this one is for Wednesday evening. And uh, we'll see that on the right hand side here, this is essentially the steering flow and the change in the steering flow with height is how vertical shear is defined. You can see strong 20 knot low level flow at the bottom, but it gets lighter up here in the middle layers. And those of you who know hodographs will see that there is a stretching of the hodograph from the low to mid levels from west northwest to east southeast, and the length of that vector is about 15 to 20 knots. So that ends up being about 20 knots of vertical shear in the middle part of the atmosphere. And that's why we get this asymmetric look here with all the moisture on the east side because Brett will be moving 
fairly quickly toward the west. So while the shear is not prohibiting development, it may cap the development at a reasonable ceiling. So we have seen some of the model guidance get a little bit weaker in general today. And you'll see if we take the GFS out toward Friday afternoon, and you'll see it's it's still not that strong, about the same central pressure as it was a couple days prior, and still a little bit asymmetric here. So a little bit sheared and only tropical storm strength. Now, if we go back to yesterday's runs and runs prior to that, you'll see that it was stronger in farther east. You could see a strong hurricane on some of these runs and it was slower. But now that the storm is weaker, we're seeing it move faster and farther to the south, which is what we talked about yesterday. The steering flow is more toward the west and quicker if Brett is a weaker and therefore less tall of a vortex. And it feels that low-level steering flow a bit more. It also arrives at the Caribbean before the upper-level trough to the north has time to come to the south and try to force it to recurve. I can show you this on the European model uh, where we have this big upper-level ridge centered here on Wednesday night. And this is Brett right here. And it gets underneath of that ridge and moves into the Caribbean prior to this trough being able to erode the ridge. So if I go forward, you'll see that eventually this trough does come down and starts to generate a weakness in the ridge. Uh, but Brett has already made it into the Caribbean at this point because it moved a little faster. And so that's why a lot of these model tracks are now into the Caribbean as opposed to turning toward the north uh, like more of them were doing yesterday. So within the last 24 hours, we've seen that trend continue toward a weaker, faster system that actually crosses the Lesser Antilles and gets into the Caribbean. Now you'll notice that there's another storm behind it on this model run. This is Invest 93L. That's the system you could see on the satellite loop behind Brett. So this is Brett here. This is 93L behind it. That wave may develop as well. And what we can see on the European model forecast is that this trough does come down in time to divert 93L out into the open water. So hopefully this pattern is showing us that uh, even if Brett impacts the Caribbean islands, the storm behind it will hopefully turn harmlessly north into the open Atlantic waters, but we'll keep an eye on it as, of course, things can still change. Now, if you look at the verbatim European model forecast for Brett, we'll go back to the beginning here, and similar to the GFS, it's in a favorable environment overall, but there are some limitations here with some shear showing up. So again, you'll see the asymmetry in the moisture field with the low-level circulation on the western edge of it by midweek and that persists to a severe degree in fact on the European model and this is a pretty weak storm and uh, may not even be a named storm on the model given how weak it looks on this particular run. So relative to the GFS and other models the European model actually shows dissipation as Brett enters the Caribbean which would obviously be good news and limit some of the heavier weather impacts to the leeward and windward islands. Uh, but it could uh, mean that the weather comes a little bit farther south. Maybe the Windward Islands get more action if Brett is weak, like it shows here. Now, sometimes the European model can have a weak bias and show dissipation a little too early. So it's possible that something more like the GFS is still possible here, where we have a tropical storm rolling through perhaps the Leeward Islands, but probably not a really strong hurricane. We have some models like h Wharf showing, you know, very strong hurricane moving through the islands, it's pretty unlikely at this time of year. It, it is impressive that we have these storms forming in June, but still the overall conditions unlikely to favor a really powerful hurricane, especially one moving into the Caribbean where conditions typically are not favorable. And that will be true here as well, especially because we're going to have an upper level trough digging in. There's Brett showing up on Thursday night and Friday, and you can see this trough digging in in the upper level flow will increase the shear further to a more prohibitive level. So as Brett moves westward, chances are dissipation will occur at some point. Exactly when is still a little fuzzy. We saw that the European dissipates it on arrival to the islands. The GFS takes a longer time to dissipate. You'll see that it weakens a lot as it moves in the vicinity of Puerto Rico and then disappears after that. And that's because of that sheer and dry air impacting it uh, in the Caribbean. And uh, that will probably happen no matter what. It's just a question of exactly where. And so we could see downstream islands such as Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the Dominican Republic, perhaps seeing some impacts, some remnant rainfall and flash flooding may be a possibility in these areas as we head later into the week and through the weekend, even if it's just the remnants of Brett moving through. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on that. Here's the National Hurricane Center forecast. This is their second official advisory of the day, 
showing Brett strengthening over the next few days as it approaches the islands. Now, one thing I'll note here, the NHC does show intensification into a hurricane, and this possibility certainly cannot be discounted. Uh, but the NHC also notes in their technical discussion that there is uncertainty in the modeling and that a stronger hurricane would perhaps deviate a little bit more toward the north, whereas a weaker system might move farther west and south. So there might be more uncertainty here than this forecast cone conveys. That cone is always the same size, no matter what the situation is. In this case, there might be a little bit of wiggle room here, including in the intensity. So it's possible that Brett is just a weak to moderate tropical storm, winds of 40 to 50 miles per hour as it rolls through the islands. But it is also possible that it manages to become a hurricane and fight off the light to moderate vertical shear on its way westward. And if it's able to combat uh, the environment, it could be a little stronger and maybe deviating a little bit more toward the north as it does so. So this is worth keeping a close eye on either way for the islands. And your arrival time for impacts is likely to be sometime on Thursday. The earliest reasonable arrival time right now based on the forecast is Thursday morning local time. And we could see impacts down in the wind Windward Islands, especially if Brett is weaker, but also up in the Leeward Islands because the northern side of the storm will have the strongest winds. Uh, typically the waves and the storms coming from east to west. The north side is the strong side in terms of wind, uh, but flash flooding will also be a concern here as it always is with storms rolling through some of these mountainous uh, terrain areas uh, where high amounts of rainfall can fall, uh, even if the winds aren't particularly strong. So we'll keep an eye on this throughout the week. Uh, we're not seeing Brett intensify very, very quickly yet, but a gradual strengthening process is ongoing and we'll keep a close eye on this as it nears the islands later this week. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.